Welcome to Beyond Bosch Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Dahl. I want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and leave a review for this episode if you like it. Today, I am very excited to welcome Akalesh Singhanya, Senior Application Engineer in the Bosch Motorsports Group. He is working on all things endurance racing, and I'm so excited to hear more about this. So welcome, Akalesh. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Jessica. Absolutely. So I obviously didn't give you a giant intro because I much prefer to hear what you have to say about who you are and what you do. Could you share a bit more with us? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I was born and brought up in India. I did my bachelor's there. Uh, I would say the most exciting part of a bachelor's was formula student uh, where uh, students design an open wheel single seater style race car and go compete with other student teams. Uh, so I had the privilege of you know, working on engines and then leading my team there to Germany and Czech Republic, which was uh, you know, kind of adding fuel to the fire. I had to learn more about automotive. Then I worked in India for two more years in engine research, came uh, to the US, uh, which was a big shift for me <clears throat> and for my master's at the University of Michigan. And I, and uh, with a mass with a major in automotive engineering. And there I realized that I wanted to do something new. And I found myself learning more and more about electrification of uh, automotive. Uh, yeah, in the automotive domain. And then I joined Bosch. I got lucky with an internship and a capstone project there, which opened me to this wonderful, uh, you know, area of electrification, uh, all the new stuff that was happening there and the opportunities to grow were more because it was still an upcoming uh, field. In there, I worked with prototypes, etc., and then started supporting the Bosch Motorsport Group, uh, not being in the group right from the get go, and then slowly found myself in the Bosch Motorsport Group working uh, on these crazy cars. Uh, which uh, you may or may not have heard of, uh, but it's uh, LMDH is the category. It was introduced uh, into racing just this year, 2023, at Daytona. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of exciting things happening in your career so far, just in your life. Um, you're not only, you know, moving to another country studying some things that are very cutting edge just coming out. I don't know much about um, the electrification with racing and what you're talking about. I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you just kind of touched on and what was released in Daytona. Absolutely. So uh, electrification has been around for a while, but I think uh, it died pretty early in the 1900s and then uh, recently saw a kind of a rebirth in the last 10, 12 years. And uh, yeah, uh, Bosch has been, you know, invested in this technology and we've been building up, you know, with the aim for a sustainable future, all these new products and services, software, et cetera. Uh, in my capacity at Bosch Motorsport, we've been developing this uh, hybrid system for endurance cars. Uh, the hybrid system comprises of a battery, which is uh, a product of our supplier and Bosch provides motor controllers, uh, electric motors, uh, hybrid control units, and we work with OEMs uh, and teams to put them all together into race cars, and these go racing uh, for, let's say, 24 hours of Daytona. That's a nonstop 24-hour race that was to start with, and recently we had the 24 hours of Le Mans. Going back to more about the technology, uh, it's a it's complex because it's a it's a culmination of both combustion and electrification. So if you thought combustion was complicated, or if you thought <laughs> electrification was complicated, now you combine the two, and you try to make both uh, it work in harmony and perform to the best. Uh, you know, push the limits of how well it can perform. Wow. Well, and then yeah, pushing the limits because you're talking about 24 hours of racing. I can imagine there's that's definitely at play there. Yeah. How, uh, sorry. How do you do that? No, you're good. I, I mean, so so you go to these races, these 24 hour endurance races. Yeah. Uh, part of my job is also doing track support for these uh, for this category. So 
yeah, we go to this uh, event, uh, these events, these race events. Uh, Daytona is one, which is the big one, the 24 hours. Then you have 12 hours of Sebring and like you have a few sprint races. And then recently we had another big one, which was the 24 hours of Le Mans in France. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. A lot of high pressure and really keeps you on your toes. So, you know, you cannot have anything go wrong because if anything goes wrong, you just, you know, you watch time go by. You need to fix things fast. Each lap is two minutes, three min uh, three and a half minutes at Le Mans, two, two minutes at Daytona. And like while you're standing there thinking, you other cars are going one more lap. Aww. So you have to be qu quick on your feet, take the pressure and do the best you can. Wow, that sounds intense. It sounds exciting, you know, like yep. that's got to be a fun, a fun job. It's probably exhausting. Are you up 24 hours? No, thankfully, we have a great team. We okay. cover up for each other. <laughs> okay. uh, we do take like a small break in the night for like four hours where we take shifts. So, uh, yeah, but it gets intense. You get about four hours of sleep over 48 or 50 hours. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes, the adrenaline keeps you awake and you know it's amazing. I wouldn't trade this job for anything else. People might think it's a lot, but then you know, you have time after to relax, which I really appreciate within Bosch. That okay, I've done a 24 hour race, I can take a week off, a couple of days off, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine you need it. And you're tra traveling around the world and then and then really exerting yourself. Yep. What does it mean to be track support? So I know you're you're obviously mm -hmm. problem solving, but like, are you are you to one specific team uh -huh. or is it to all cars? How does that work? Yeah, taking a step back, Bosch is the spec system supplier, meaning uh, all cars in this particular category of racing. Uh, in IMSA, it's called GTP. In uh, WEC, which is the World Endurance Championship, it's called uh, Hypercar. Uh, Hypercar has a few other cars also, but all LMDH cars would have the Bosch hybrid system. So when we are doing track support, we are monitoring multiple cars, all of the cars that have this Bosch hybrid system. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, we are limited number of people. Uh, so if you know, we cannot have more than one thing go wrong at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get into this? Did you, I mean, I know you, you gave a little bit of your path to get here. Yep. Um, where did that start? Did it start when you were, you know, young? Did you have kind of this, did you crave this type of thing? Did you, were you around this type of thing when you were younger? Not really. Uh, I wasn't around like race cars, but uh, when I was very young, uh, my, like in India, it's not really common to, you know, be fixing your own cars or doing anything like that. Uh, you would just give it to the repair shop. Uh, my father used to just hang around to learn and see more. That piqued my interest with how do these things work? You know, how does how did the wheels move from liquid fuel? And then uh, the first weekend of every January of every year the, in January, we would have these an antique car parade. I would just sit in the balcony and watch this parade and yeah, all of these things kind of got me very interested in automotive. Mm. And then in my bachelor's, when I got, I would say, a taste of racing with Formula SAE, uh, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I've been, yeah, I've been trying really hard. I have to say, like, getting here, you need a lot of support. My father, my mother, my brother, and my wife have been very supportive uh, in pushing me to get here. Especially, you know, when you're out uh, so many weeks, weekends a year, you need to have a very strong support system. So I appreciate all of them for doing that for me. Yeah, that's great. What do you feel like is one of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome? Uh, I think uh, the move from uh, India to the U.S., I don't come from a very rich family, so just trying to fund my education at the University of Michigan and then just moving away from an already set up support system. As I said, it's very important uh, wherever you go. So leaving behind all my friends, uh, my family and just moving to the US, uh, it was a big obstacle in a way like, you know, adjusting to the culture. It's a very different environment, very different. Uh, let's say. Yeah, just a very different culture in the US. So 
coming here, setting everything up for the first time. Uh, I don't need to say that it's a little different for international uh, students slash international uh, people in the US and trying to get jobs, etc. So I would say that was one of the most big, uh, the biggest obstacles I've faced to get here. I can't even imagine. I mean, and you came by yourself, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's I give you a lot of credit. That's a that's a that is a big obstacle to overcome. <laughs> do you go you. to India yeah. often? Yes, I do need to see. I I am a family guy, so I do need to see my parents quite often. Oh. Uh, I try to make it at least once a year. Okay. And I know COVID uh, put a break, so the the two years were harsh because I couldn't travel during then, but then I covered up with multiple visits right after. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Uh, so taking a little bit of a step back, we're mm-hmm. talking about all this exciting stuff. You're on the racetrack. You're working yep. with all this really just like fun, high energy, but I know that's not necessarily, it can't be every day, right? So like, what does your day-to-day look like? You're working with software. You're, you're an application yeah. engineer. What does kind of your average day look like? If I were to say an average day, like when I'm in the office, I would go in uh, kind of, you know, we have uh, say following a race event, go in, we have multiple points to catch up on what we thought we could improve for the next race. We, We work on those. Also kind of like topics of how we can improve looking at newer projects, I think with racing and with motorsports is about pushing the limits. And I think that's what we strive to do every day, like go and find out how can we be better? And even if everyone said we are awesome, we are, I think this group is the biggest critique of itself. And I love that because we always strive to get better. We never say that, well, this is it. So we find ways to get better. Then then getting on to the more technical side of things, uh, the software, and application meaning uh, software is how things should work in an ideal world and application is let's make the software work to the realistic conditions that we have so so the software and application side of things that we can kind of work off remotely uh, use the data we have uh, captured on track and use that to make our systems better i love what you said about a little bit ago about um you know, everyone already said it's awesome, but you guys are like, no, that's not enough. We can always do better. Right. I love that. That has to be. So is the culture in motorsports, how would you describe it? I mean, I'm gathering like kind of competitive, but in a positive way, like as a team, like what are you, how would you describe the culture there? There's a reason I'm still at Bosch and I think <laughs> it's all the people, uh, you know, all the people in motorsport, they are terrific uh, as the one word very helpful, very kind, and extremely knowledgeable. So uh, we push each other to be better versions of ourselves, help each other out. I know that I can count on them for anything, even outside of work. So I think that culture really uh, pushes you to grow as an individual. And also, uh, I think Jacob, who is our director, like. He and all the people around the management, et cetera, have given us a small space where we can make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes because that's how you grow and learn. So that is something I really like about motorsport that you can make small mistakes and learn from those without having, you know, a huge compromise on performance or anything. That sounds wonderful. I I love that. So with that, what, what are you the most proud of and or what are you the most excited about? I am uh, I'm most proud of what we've achieved uh, recently in LMDH. Like I'm not going to go back into history and try to dive deeper into things, but in the last year and a half, uh, how the group like together, all of us went from simulation, which was like, hey, I think this is what we need to have a successful race. And then we distribute these requirements, make these products, work with the OEMs, get these cars together, and then actually come to Daytona and Le Mans and be like, yes, these cars are freaking awesome. I think <laughs> I'm really proud of what we've done here. And like Le Mans is really fresh since it was just last weekend. 
being a LMDH car finish uh, on the podium was a big win for me, a moment of extreme pride. I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, coming to the second part of your question, what am I most excited about? Uh, technology. Technology always excites me and pushing the boundaries of what technology can do. So I think uh, like, you know, we use these uh, parts, services, software, et cetera, in these environments where we learn many things and then we take these learnings and push them to cars on road. So we collaborate with other divisions within Bosch and learn from them and share our learnings with them. And this basically funds or fuels technology in the future. Like, for example, I'm looking forward to a hydrogen, uh, let's say hydrogen based economy in automotive where everything is hydrogen fuel cell, hydrogen combustion, et cetera. So what's new and what? how can we explore technology to give a sustainable future? Uh, I think that's what excites me a lot. Honestly, sounds like you're in the right place. It sounds like you've really found a good fit for yourself. I can hear it. It's yeah. really fun to hear your passion and excitement as you're talking about your work. Uh, absolutely. The group's amazing. And, uh, you know, we couldn't have been here without this, let's say, a, a, a leash where, OK, hey, go find out what you can do with available technology. You know, take this little time and space and let's see what we can come up with. If uh, that support did not exist, we wouldn't be here today. That's wonderful. I love this. This has been such a good conversation. I want to, I love asking this with everyone who comes on the show. What is your best piece of advice? It can be personal or career. I would say it's never too late to try. I did not uh, end up in motorsport. Like I said, I, I wanted to be in motorsport after Formula SAE, but I did not start my career in motorsport. So uh, keep trying and you'll get there and definitely have a support system. I think that's, uh, you know, you can progress a lot in career, but you might feel alone without a support system. Here is where I really acknowledge, uh, you know, my parents, my wife, my brother, who are always there with me. So as uh, I, I would say that's important to have. Absolutely, that's huge. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, especially coming off of just getting back from France and another race. Um, this has been so great. Thanks for joining. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot to you too. Thanks for listening to Beyond Bosch Podcast. In case you missed our other episodes, now's your chance. Go back and take a listen 